Hello my friends, John LaRuffa here with another Straight Up Solo, and in this episode we're going to take a look at Windmill Valley. I'll show you how this plays from a solo standpoint, like you want to think about it. Alright, let's get started. Okay folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. If you have, I really do appreciate that support. Thank you very much. So, what is this game about? Well, it's got an interesting mechanism. This game is basically an action rondelle kind of game, alright? And your rondelle, let me move this over a second. Your rondelle in this game is based on this windmill gear set over here. And as this gear set spins on your turn, you get to take either this or this, or if you have like a plus symbol like I do, you take both actions. Um, but to do that, the way it works is you are controlling this water flow mechanism here to see how fast it spins. And the whole goal of the game is to score points in a variety of ways, but most of the points are going to come from planting tulips in specific rows and columns and not doing, well, mixing and then matching in that direction. Plus, there's a bunch of uh, points you can score for endgame contracts. You can score a bunch of points throughout the game by doing different things. Uh, so there's a lot going on in this game, and it is pretty unique in my opinion as far as what kind of game it is. Definitely a Euro game, but it is definitely a, its own thing, okay? It's got a little bit of everything, too. You know, these aren't really contract fulfillment as much as they are end game scoring, um, if I said contract fulfillment. But let me just show you the different things that, that uh, go on in this game, and then I'll show you kind of how it works, and then I'll let you know what I think. So the first thing you're going to do, and the best thing I think to do is just to demonstrate a turn first. And I'll tell you about all the other things. And I'd say, I, I, well, I'm in the third out of four rounds. And I'm almost going to come to near the end of the game. The game advances every time this red spoke crosses over this arrow. You move up on the calendar track. When you get to the final space, you each take a number, equal number of turns. And then as long as you're not playing on medium or hard, then you take one more complete turn and the game's over. All right, so <clears throat> taking a look at what to do, the first thing you're going to do is determine what are you going to do with this floodgate? Are you going to open it up, meaning that your wheel will spe speed faster and then the water level will go up? Are you going to bring it down so your wheel will spin slower? Um, or are you going to leave it the same? And wherever it is, is what's going to happen. And you say, well, geez, I don't know. What should I do? Well, it all depends on which kind of action you want to take. For instance, I want to take this trade action next time right here. So in order to do that, I can do one of two things. I can leave it as is and spend a tool to reduce the speed of my wheel, or I can bring it down. Bringing it down doesn't cost any money. Bringing it up costs money depending on which level you're doing, but you also get points for that. So I'm going to actually bring it down and bring it down. And that means this, my thing is only going to spin one and I don't increase the water level in this area over here. So I brought it down, no increase to the water level. And then I spin my, my gear one space like that. Now I have a choice. I can either take the trade action or I can drop down the water by two power and get this reward twice, one or the other. I'm going to take the trade action, like I said, and what that's going to do is that's going to let me take one of the tulips that I have on my board, and I'm going to put it down in a spot. And actually, I'm going to put it right here because I want to get one more contract card to fulfill this, um, this queen's uh, wish, okay, for some points. And then I also want to, um, and actually, he just... He just made it so it's impossible for me to get the 10. But I can fulfill the Queen's Wish, and I also get some endgame points. So I had previously decided I want to get this one right here. This will give me three points for every windmill that's adjacent to a water down spot like that. So I slide that right under there. Now that I've fulfilled the Queen's Wish, I can put this over here. I'll get six points at the end of the game. Um, and then I will refill the card. And I don't know if you get it at the end of the game or right now. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to change, okay? Probably um, at the end of the game. So my turn is effectively over. Then we go to the AI, and the AI is going to flip over this card, as many of these Automa decks do. And then it's going to do whatever it kind of says up here, and then it'll take the action on its wheel. So what it wants to do is it wants to increase the floodgate by one space. So it is going to do that. 
It doesn't have to pay any coins and it will get a point for doing so. Then it's gonna spin its wheel two spaces because that's where it is in the speed spot here. So it's gonna go one, two. Then it wants to place a windmill and it's gonna place a windmill based on a priority that's really small to see in this little player aid here. But luckily they put the priority on there and I really appreciate it because that'd be really annoying if they didn't. So I'm glad they did. So you pull any windmill out of their stack and it wants to place one, if at all possible, in a place where it can plant tulip bulbs. So that would be right here because this is a lot of plant tulip bulbs. That's a very strong space for it. And so it'll be able to plant three red bulbs because this spot here wants to plant, this spot here wants to plant, and then actually there's a market stall and even one more thing. So I'll just, I'm not going to go over the specific priorities of how that works, but like I said, it gets to plant three red bulbs because it wants to do red bulbs. And that's very good for it. It's going to score it a bunch of points. So we're going to go ahead and fill that up. Two and three. And then it wants, it will take one of these market actions, which means it moves over here. And the way the market action works specifically for the bot is it will plant another bulb of the color shown here. And then it will also plant a violet or a black bulb, not a violet, but a black bulb even though it's really not black, but that's a whole other thing. All right. Then it turns over. So basically, that is the way the game goes. You're going to alternate turns. The bot is going to be controlled by this deck of cards and the wheel, and it's always going to take the action over here. Its actions don't necessarily match the actions you take because it does it a little bit differently. You have control to do any action you want, plus... There's other things you could do. You can build up your action wheels with different bonuses and better actions. So that's one of the things you can do. If you land in this space, you can get different ones of these, customizing your wheel, uh, both of them if you want, and making things more interesting and more powerful. I already showed you how you can get a helper card. You can get a helper card. Oh, and I forgot when I did the, I plan on doing that. I actually got two points for this because I, whenever I take the trade action or the foreign trade action, I get two extra points. So don't mind if I do. Um, so that's what these cards do. Either help you out with bonuses while you're playing the game or end game scoring. I've talked to you about the calendar, right? And that's kind of how it goes. You get extra bonuses once you've crossed over and that is also the end game timer. And then what's going on with this windmill situation? Well, the way the windmills work is that you're trying to place as many windmills as you can because the more you place, the more you will unlock different scoring for each bulb you've already planted. So you can see I've unlocked, I placed three windmills and I've unlocked this little spot, which just means three points for every one of these black bulbs that I've planted. But it would be nice by the end of the game if I could get this one out, then I would get two for these. And so there is a little bit of a push and pull kind of system there. And when you place the windmills out, you have to be able to trace a path back to the market. And if it goes through someone else's spot, they get a victory point, all right? But if it goes through your spot, it doesn't. You might have to pay some money to go there, but when you go there, you get all that is shown. The market action is a little confusing in a lot of ways, but basically what you're doing is you're moving this around here, and you're going to get one of these actions equal to the number of existing discs that are there plus your disc. So for instance, if I was to move my disc, my blue one, from here to here, I'd only get one. But there are some mechanics that let me pay one coin uh, to move one of these to another spot if I wanted to, and that could help. And there's some other little nuances there, but the market just offers more variety of actions. So you've got all those things. I showed you what happens with the trade, the foreign trade, where you can place it down and you get the two adjacent bonuses. But if you want, you could also, instead of placing one over here, and by the way, each of these has to be different colors, you could remove all of them and put them in your storage instead. So there's that. Plus, these cards will rotate if you fill up the card. And then finally, you can lower, like I said, lower the water amount by using these actions down here. When you do that, it'll be two or maybe more if you have a different action. But times the bonus you want there, and you can get either coins or you can get points. And that's pretty much it. Now, at the end of the game, here I want to show you this up close. You score a lot of different ways, but one of the main ways that you're going to score that's unique... Oh, and also when you're planting tulips here, 
you get any of the bonuses that you cover in classic Euro style. Now, at the end of the game, if you fill up this entire row and they're all the same color, you'd get eight, nine, seven, or six points. If you fill up all the row, but they're not all the same color, they're just a mixture, then you just get four, five, three, or three. If you have all four different colors in these columns, you'll get one, two, three, four, etc. points. However, if there's two of the same, no matter if you filled it or not, you lose five points. So you really don't want to have two of the same in the same column going up or down. So there's some penalties there. So there's kind of a unique scoring mechanism in that regard. So let me tell you what I think about it. So Windmill Valley is another game that proves to me that I actually do like Rondell games. I had some bad experience with Rondell games early in my gaming uh, career, I guess you could say. And I sort of wrote them off. But as I've played other ones throughout my time, I've started to realize I kind of do like that mechanism. And this mechanism with the Rondell is very interesting in the fact that you and the other player share the... the um, the windmill speed based on what you're doing with the floodgate, which I think is kind of cool. It's an interactive situation. And there's ways to score points with it. Um, there's, there's a lot to think about. Plus, you want to figure out what action you're going to land on and how do I customize my wheel to make it more interesting and have other things I can do. Lots of really cool things about this Rondell mechanism. It's not just a, um, a gimmick. It really actually works really, uh, really well. Provides a fun aspect to the game for that reason alone. But then the game has so many other unique things going for it. I, I would say enjoyable things going for it. I like how the action wheel can be customized. I like how the cards that you get customize what you focus on, how you get bonus points, how you get uh, scoring at the end. I like how that if you go faster, there's an incentive to be the first to advance in the counter because you get better rewards and you also might get extra points at the end. I like how there's an overarching goal, like I show you the Queen's Wish, where there's something to say, if I can get all this done, I can score a bunch of points that way. Just a lot of really cool things going on in a unique way. I would say this game is not on the light side, not on the heavy side, it's right in the medium side. Uh, but what's interesting about it is there is so many things that you can decide to do that it provides you with a plethora of options, lots of stuff to explore, lots of stuff to do. Uh, and I just think it's fun. And most of the things you do are gaining stuff, gaining stuff. Yeah, there's some penalties here and there, but it seems like this is this is a game where you're you're almost rich in things versus poor in things. Now, yeah, the guilders can get a little bit tight depending on what you're doing, but there's ways to deal with that. There's ways to mitigate that by dropping the water level or other things. So it seems like in this game, there's lots of levers you can pull to get yourself out of a potentially frustrating or limiting situation. I just think it's really cool. I like the fact that whenever you cover something, you get little bonuses. I'm always a big fan of that. I, I, I It's just a sucker for that kind of thing. The farther I get down the track, the more bonuses I get. But that's the way the tulips work. I think it's really cool. Just in general, there's a lot to like about this game. So I, at the first, when it, when it first was announced, I kind of decided, nah, it looks a little bit too simplistic or gimmicky. And I was wrong. I was definitely wrong. I saw a lot of good reviews of this game. People saying they really liked it, and I can see why. It's a lot of fun. It takes up a bunch of table space. Uh, it's it's. I wouldn't say it's fiddly by any means, but um, just a large board. You're reaching around trying to grab stuff to get things going. But I guess it's better than a small condensed uh, board. I think you could. They could have made it a little bit smaller, but it's okay. It's it's fine. I, I'm not really all that critical of it. In general, the the. Uh, AI, the Automa, uh, is, it's called the Gardener in this game, plays pretty smoothly. I don't love the fact that the Gardener takes turns differently than you do. And I wish, in that regard, they had a player aid that says, this is how the Gardener does this, this is how the Gardener does that. They have a Gardener's turn player aid, which I showed you before. Uh, but the problem is, is that on this thing, there is nothing... They don't, they don't, it's like they're missing one more card, one more card to tell you what it would do in an abbreviated way. And that's, I think, a miss, but um, I'll probably make something for myself just to remind myself. It's not too hard to figure it out, but you, it could save you from having to go back into the rule book. So I think that was just, that was an unfortunate miss. The, the player aid they give you is great. You get all the actions right here. 
you get the full turn sequence right here. Very good. So they did that really well. They just missed, I think, on that one uh, for the solo bot. Either way, it's a very good game. It's fun. I think the hype that it's getting is deserved because it provides just a blend of new or I'd say semi-new mechanics that are just fun. This game is one of those where the sum is greater than or the the sum is greater than the, the all the parts, right? So you just it just has more interesting stuff packed into similar things we've seen in the past. But I like it. I also like the fact that you know the, there's a compulsion to play those windmills in spots, not just to get the bonuses, but also to improve your scoring. So it, there's a smart way of like, if I want to really score more, I got to push these windmills out here, but I got to have money to do it, but I get bonuses for it. So there's a lot of like back and forth stuff that's really cool. And I just enjoy that. I think it's fun. So that's what I think about it. I think that the person who wouldn't like this game, I guess if you, if you like more rondelles or if you don't like rondelles, then this would not be for you. Uh, if you don't want to be overwhelmed by choices and things and kind of um, a little bit of forward, you, you can't really do a lot of forward planning because you don't know what the water wheel is going to do for the other person. Like if they slow it down, it's going to be different. So if you want to have more, uh, a stricter plan, you do have to bone up on some tools, but tools aren't the easiest thing to come by either. So overall, it's just a really good, really fun experience. It's tight, but not too tight. It's got plenty of things to explore and enjoy. And I, I think it's going to stay in my collection for quite a long time, if permanently, because there's just a uniqueness about it, which is which is really fun. And I see myself pulling it off the shelf on regular intervals throughout the year and just kind of enjoying all that uniqueness again. So that's what I think. I hope this was informative to you. And as I always say, whatever you do in the future, I really do hope you have a fantastic time doing it. So take it easy, everybody. We'll see you next time.